Glad to see you here. Get started just a little late with waiting on Destiny. Next Sunday we will be doing the uh, drive-in service again. Bring someone if you if you know anyone that will come. I think Ashley's got something planned for the children. We just thank you, Lord, for this day, this opportunity to come out to your house. Father, I worship you, Father. Father, we pray for the world today, Lord, in this midst of the crisis that's going around, going on. We just pray this morning, Lord, that you be with each and every person, Lord, that's sick, Father, the family members. Father, we know this morning, Lord, that we just need to keep our eyes on you, keep our eyes on heaven this morning, Lord, that you've got it all in your hands. Father, we love you this morning. We ask for your blessing on this service this morning, Lord. Most of all, Father, we just pray that if not here, someone somewhere be saved this morning, Lord, that another heart, another soul, Lord, will turn our life over to you. Father, anoint us from on high. We'll not forget to give you the praise and the glory. For us in your blessed Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Yeah.
But I like this. If I trust the mighty hand of God, he shield the flames again. <laughs> Thank you. 
I've been living, this is the time we are to let the world see that we're living for Jesus. Amen. i 
How many of you know God's a way maker this morning? Yes. He'll make a way where nobody else can. for them this morning. It's good to be here with you. Glad we get to see each other's face. I know we can't touch, but it's good to see you. I've been missing you a lot. Amen. It's good to be able to broadcast this thing out to the community. I'm excited about that. But if you got you a Bible with you or your phone or what have you, I invite you to open up to the First Kings. The book of First Kings in the 19th chapter. We'll read there for a minute and Read the first 12 verses of Scripture and we'll preach for a minute. I'll try not to keep it long. I know we started a little late. Amen. I like the way this mic sounds. I'm going to have to 
Can I borrow this every Sunday, Mom? That sounds good. Amen. First Kings chapter number 19 and verse number 1, the Bible says this. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. Wow. Eh, it's enough now, O oh Lord. How many of you have ever felt like that? Right. It's enough. I've had enough. I can't take no more. Just let me die. You ever felt like that? Can I get an amen on that? You ever been right. there? I've been there before. But I'm thankful God don't leave us in that place. Oh, Lord, take away my life. I'm not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. I'm thankful that the Lord will send somebody by my way. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat, and he did drink, and laid him down again. <laughs> That's giving up right there. But look, God didn't leave him. Verse 7 said, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time. Somebody say second time. Second time. And touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went into the strength of the meat forty days and forty nights and to Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have I forsaken, or the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And even I, only I am left, and they seek my life to take it away. You ever felt like you've been alone? Maybe these past three weeks, man, more lonelier than you ever have been. But God speaks to him and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break into pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And verse 12 says, And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. Father God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come, God, Lord, and stand behind a sacred desk and preach your word. God, Lord, I pray right now that you would begin to hide me behind the bloodstained cross of Calvary. God, don't let uh, myself become forth, God, but I pray that your words are ever so evident in our life, God. Lord, I pray, God, that if there's anything, any pride, self-vain, or self-glory that may want to rise up, God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would begin to bind it, God. Lord, I pray, God, right now that something be said today, something uh, uh, be done today, God, where a life is touched, where a life is transformed, God, and may Jesus be uh, known across the community. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach to you for a moment, if I can, on the thought. Uh, don't worry. God's got this. Right. Somebody say that with me. Don't worry. God's, God's got this. Got amen. It. Don't worry. God has got it. We're on week number three, amen, of stay at home. Boy, I'm about to go crazy, y'all. I, I was itching. I was praying. It started to drizzle a little bit this morning. I said, I'm going to rebuke the rain in the name of Jesus. It ain't going to rain. I want to see everybody's beautiful, smiling faces, right? And we hear the news, and we, we see what's going on around the community and around the world, and we see, 
Amen. That that they're, they're telling us that it's going to get worse before it gets better. We're, we're seeing everywhere we turn that it's going to be uh, uh, the next two weeks is going to be as bad as it's going to get. I see around the world where people are worrying about maybe their bills, maybe their finances, maybe they're worried about their health, maybe they're worried about their kids, worried about if we can get this virus, worried about if we can get this. We're worried about lots of things, and worry comes from a place when we don't know, when we can't see the outcome, when we can't expect what's going to happen. But could we come to a place in agreement this morning where we can say this very thing? I'm going to quit telling everybody about my problems, and I'm going to start telling my problems how big my God is. Yeah, right. Amen. Could we start saying that this morning? Could we say that in a place of agreement this morning, knowing that God, hey, hey God's got it, church. We pick up a man here in First Kings who was, church, he was at the... His prime in life, he was, he was one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. And we pick him up at uh, one of the greatest prophets in, in the Bible. And we pick him up where he has hit rock bottom. You ever been there before? Oh, yeah. Down came. Well, you worried about everything. The Bible says he was worried about his life. But, but what's important is to know just who this man was, this man of God. If we go back to the previous chapter, we can read, amen, that this same prophet who's asking to die was the same prophet that prophesied a drought for over three years. It was this same prophet that after he prophesied the drought, he went to a place and he raised a widow's son who was dead. It was this same prophet who not only uh, uh, prophesied the drought and raised the widow's son, but then hey, he, he called fire down from heaven. The Bible says uh, that he went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Amen. And, and, and there was the prophets of Baal, and they were trying to see whose God was real. Amen. And the God of heaven showed up, not the prophets of Baal or the gods of Baal, but the God of heaven showed up and the sacrifice that was there on the altar. Amen. The Bible says that they, uh, uh, they put the sacrifice there and the fire from heaven came and consumed it all. Then, not only did he do that... That same drought that he prophesied, he goes back to the mount or the top of Mount Carmel and he prays rain down. But we pick him up in a bad time in his life. We pick him up in a desperate place in his life. We pick him up, church, where the Bible says that he is worrying. We pick him up under the juniper tree. There's some of them over here sitting under the tree. He just wants to die, y'all. He don't want to go on. Only thing he's worried about is getting gone before they get him. But I'm here to tell you this morning, don't worry because God's got it. Don't worry because God has got it. Hey, I want you to think of this. This man, he prayed for all these things. He prayed for drought drought came. He prayed for a, a widow's son to be raised from the dead and he is alive. He prayed for the fire from heaven and fire fell. But then he asked God, he said, just let me die. God didn't answer that prayer. I'm here to tell you this morning that God's not through with you yet. You may feel like it, you may not see no end in what's going on, but God's not through with you yet. Amen. Don't worry because God has got this thing. Just a few things in the scripture that I would like to point out to you to prove how God's got this thing. We should not worry. Look again with me at verse number three. And the Bible says this. And when he saw that they were after him. He arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness 
and came and sat down under that juniper tree and requested himself that he may die and said, it is enough. I'm tired. I'm tired of going on. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. I'm tired. I just want to go now. Oh, Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, the angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. The first thing that I want to point out to you this morning is that you are never. Somebody say that. You are never. You are never. never. I got to get some amen from the back back here. I can't hear him out there. You are never out of God's reach. Right? <laughs> Somebody say amen. Amen. Look, the Bible says that Elijah fled for his life in verse 3. It says that he went to a place called Beersheba, and he dropped his servant off there. <laughs> he said that wasn't far enough how far he was fleeing from God. He was going to go just a little bit farther, and he went to a place, the Bible says he was in a wilderness place. <laughs> I'm thankful today, amen, it don't matter how far I get from God. It don't matter how far away I try to run from the problems that are in my life. It does not matter how far I go here and I go there, bless God, but God knows exactly where I'm at. He knows how amen. to plug it in on his GPS, amen, and say, Zach, in the wilderness place, Zach, in the desperate place, Zach, in his worrying condition, I cannot get out of his reach because his hands are ever reaching. He's reaching to the lowest valleys. He's reaching to the highest mountains. Amen. He is a God, amen, that you cannot get That's away right. from. That's right. Amen. amen. Hey, I'm thankful today that he can, hey, Elijah's somewhere between lost and found, but God knows exactly where he's at. That's right. He's somewhere in a vast wilderness. Don't nobody know where he's at? But God does. The Bible tells us that. Hey, it says he sent an angel to minister to him. He knew the very need of Elijah. He knew that Elijah needed some things from him, and he sent an angel to minister unto him, even in the wilderness. Could I say this this morning, that it does not matter if it's worry that has taken you away from God, if it is doubt that has taken you away from God, it does not matter what has gotten you distant from Him. You could have fled, amen, for your life, or fled because of sin, or fled because of this or that, amen, fled because of financial uh, instability, but it does not matter, church, because God knows where you are. Mm -hmm. He's going to find you. He got you right on His GPS. I was talking to a brother of the church yesterday. We were talking about how we don't even know how we survived before GPS was even a mm, thing. And amen. Then I, I wouldn't know what to do. I, it's been so long since I've opened up a map and read it. I wonder this morning how many of us are in that wilderness place today. We can say we're worried about our lives. We're worried about finances. We're worried about our jobs. We're worried about uh, the, 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 the economic crisis that could possibly happen. We're worried, church. But God's got it. Right. God's still in control. And when you think that you can't go on any farther, hey, he sends somebody right by your way. Mm -hmm. Send somebody right by your way to touch you and minister unto you exactly what it is that you he knows your problems. He knows your situation. He knows that he can get to you. I'm thankful for that today. I've had myself in some messed up predicaments every now and then. You ever been there? Got yourself messed up? Anybody can testify to that? Hey, I have. But you know what? God knew exactly where I was at. And he came down and he reached way to him way down and picked me up and set me back on the solid rock. You're never out of God's reach. Secondly, look at this with me. Never out of God's reach. You can go through the highest mountains, the lowest the valleys, amen. But because you're never out of God's reach, 
It's why God's got it. That's why we shouldn't worry. He'll supply your every, every need. Say amen right there. Amen. All right. Verse 6 says this. And he looked. Remember the angel came to him and said, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and there was a cruise of water at his head and he did eat and he did drink and he laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and did drink. Verse 4, he wants to die. But could I say this this morning? I think there was a little bit more than just wanting to die. Mm -hmm. Have you ever got yourself in a pity party? Yes. Come on. Oh, it's only me. Oh, I'm the only one. I'm the only one going through this situation, and I'm the only one going through that situation. But the angel of the Lord comes by his way. He says he wants to die, but the Bible tells me he gets up and eats. Not once, but twice. Amen. He gets what he needs. Hmm. The Bible says this. I want, you, I want you to grasp this, and I don't think it's there for any, any other reason. It says, and he looked, behold, there was a cake baked on the coals. Verse 6, and a cruise of water at his head. Aren't you thankful today that it was the angel of the Lord that brought to Elijah the very things that he needed to sustain life? Right. Don't you find it interesting this morning that he brought the physical things that he needed to sustain life, but it is the, the, the water of life, the bread of life, the living water that we need to sustain our spiritual life. That thing that we need inside of us, the Word of God, the bread of life, a new living water that will come, amen, and flow from us once we uh, uh, get touched from God. I'm thankful today that I can read in this play, hey, he, he needed sustenance to, to, to survive, amen, but hey, check this out. He didn't just give him enough for his physical journey, but he gave him enough for the spiritual journey. Amen. He gave enough right there for that. I'm thankful today that when I get myself in the desperate place, in desperation, when I get worried about this, and I get worried about that, that God will come by my way. Hey, and he'll give me a scripture. Amen. He'll remind me, hey, that he'll supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He'll remind God, that there is nothing too big for him. He'll send the bread of life uh, by my way. And it'll get down deep. Uh, I sat down deep in my soul. Hey, and it'll begin to lift me up. Uh, it don't matter how much I worry. It don't matter how much I, I fret uh, about what's going on here and what's going on there. What matters is my God is big enough. My God is able enough. My God supplies all my needs. My God will. My God can. Hallelujah. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, give me some water, church. A water where I'll never thirst again. He can give you that water. Are you thirsty this morning? I wonder if there'd be one this morning that'd say, Preacher, I'm thirsty. I've been in this vast and wilderness place for too long. I've been worried about this stuff. For too long, I need some water. I need some food. I need some sustenance that'll take care of me, that'll get me where I need to go. Oh, I wonder if I'm the only one that stands in need this morning. I wonder if it's just me. Elijah got himself in a pity party. A man got himself in a place, but it was God that came and met him, touched him physically, touched him spiritually, did something for him that he could not do for himself. Amen. He did a mighty miraculous work 
in his life. <laughs> wow. But look at verse 7 with me. I like verse 7. If I get these pages to stay there. And it says, And the angel of the Lord came again. Amen. When I reject the help the first time. Come on now. When I reject the help the first time, he don't give up on me. When I tell him I don't need what you got to offer, he don't quit on me. He sent somebody by my way a second time and a third and a fourth time, church. I'm thankful today that he'll send somebody by your way and by my way, no matter how many times he's got to send them, he's just going to keep sending them on by and say, that's mine. He's worried about this. Would you help him out a little? Oh, but look, what's it say? That's not the only thing verse 7 says. It says he touched him. And he said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. Could I tell you this morning that you caught up in your worry, mm -hmm. that you caught up in your problem, that you caught up in your current situation, your problem in life because you're trying to do this thing on your own? <laughs> See, he was trying to survive. <laughs> That which was coming to take him out on his own. And he began to worry about the thing that was trying to take him out. It was, remember, the same man that just called fire down from heaven. Hey, he could have expected God to respond the same way that he responded before. But what the Bible says, he got worried. He got scared for his life. And he fled. He got all up in his problem church. He got in his situation. He started worrying about that thing, which was that, because he was trying to do it alone. But you see, when he was walking with God, amen, it was the fire coming from heaven. It was, amen, the, the, the widow's son that was being arisen, amen. We got to get out of our problems. We got to get out of our own heads, so to speak. And give this thing to God. Mm -hmm. We got to quit trying to walk this thing by ourselves. That's right. We got to depend on Him. Why? He knows we're a needy people. He knows that we can't do this thing alone. He knows that we need some help. It ain't nothing strange to Him when you cry out, Oh God, oh our Father, would you have mercy? On me. It's no strange thing to him. Even from the very beginning of time, we read in Genesis where he showed up in the midst of their problem, in the midst of Adam and Eve's predicament, and he helped them out. He supplied their need, amen. He supplied exactly what it was that they needed. Would there be somebody this morning to say, I got a need? But more importantly, would they respond by letting God take care of it? Amen. Wow. Last point, I'll let you go this morning. He'll meet your needs. You're never out of his reach. But this is the thing that we got to grasp this morning. That he'll show up how and when he wants to. Look at verse number 10 with me. It says, And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts and for the children of Israel. Have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. Here's pity party, Elijah, and even I only I am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. Watch this. And a great strong wind rent the mountains and break into pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. 
and after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. See, sometimes we get so caught up in expecting God to do this big, miraculous, marvelous work. Can I say this morning that my God is big? Right. Could I say this morning that my God is real? That my God does big things? But look at the latter part of the verse. It says God wasn't in the wind or he wasn't in the earthquake or he wasn't in the fire. But where was he at? He was in a still, small voice. See, some of y'all been waiting for God to show up and show out. But could I say that maybe God's way of showing up in your situation and showing out in your problem is just a still, small voice. Amen. He could be coming in. Uh, hey, he could be coming in and saying, peace, uh, be still, comfort. Uh, he could be speaking peace in you right now. And he, we over here worried and waiting for him to do some big, miraculous, marvelous work. And he can. But could I say that maybe this morning he wants to come in a still, small voice. That's right. I have witnessed the healing hand of God. I have witnessed hands being laid on people and sickness go. Lung disease go. Heart problems go. And it's amazing, church, to watch people healed and delivered. But could I say that there's no greater place then when the word of the Lord will come to me in a still, small voice, when I'm in my situation, when I'm down in my pity party, when I'm down in my problem, and he says, son, I love you. Nothing better than him to say, hey, you know, I see you worried about this and that, but you know, I, I got you. You know, hey, you remember that time back in the day when you thought you wasn't going to make it through when you thought it was going to overtake you, didn't I show up and help out then? And he shows up in that still, a small voice, hey, and he Amen. brings peace into the situation. Amen. Maybe today we shouldn't be looking for big, though he is a God of big. Maybe we should be looking for small. How many of you know that little is much mm -hmm. in the hands of right. God? Hey, it don't matter how big it is or how small it is, it is much in the hands of God. Not only does it show up how he wants to, it says he's going to show up when he wants to. Don't, hey, don't you think that when the fire fell from heaven and the prophets of Baal were killed there and at the beginning of, or the middle part of chapter 18, he could have went on ahead and took them all out. He could have took old Jezebel out. He, he could have took her out right then and right there. But sometimes God's got to take you through a little bit of something to get you to where you need to be. That's right. Sometimes God's got to carry you through the desert, to carry you through the wilderness to get you where he needs you. Amen. If you continue to read on a little bit, you'll find in the latter part of this same chapter that it was as he went to the mountain of God and God told him to go back into the wilderness place that he ends up at the very beginning of the next chapter. And he comes to a man called Elisha. And if you know your Bible at all, you'll know that it was Elisha as Elijah was being carried away in the chariot, amen, that asked one thing, a double portion of what one of the greatest prophets in Scripture had. If God would have never took him through that wilderness place, there would have never been no call to somebody two times as great as Elijah. That's right. So could I say this morning that maybe your desert place the wilderness that you're in, the, the problem that you're going through may not even be about you, but could be about for the glory of God and for the help of somebody else. Not only does he show up how, but he shows up 
when I think of old Mary and Martha said, Lord, you're four days late. He's dead. Four days late, they're right on time. Right. Amen. Could I say this morning that you may think your problem is never ending? You may think this uh, thing that's going on in the world is never ending. It'll never come to an end. But could I say this, that he'll show up when and how he wants to. He'll meet you right in the midst of your need and do for you what you cannot or will not, in Elijah's case, do for yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Come on up here, Drew. I've got an old song. I, I, they used to sing it sometimes. We go a little new now. How many of y'all remember this? He's the on time God. Sing it. That's right. <laughs> Come yes, on. Yes, he is. Hey, what, what is that on this side? He's the on time, time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him. He's there right on time. He'll be there right on time, won't he, sister? Because he's a on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You're never out of the reach of God this morning, so don't count yourself out. He supplies all of our needs. He supplies. The Bible says he's not a man that he could lie or or the son of man that he could repent. What he does for one, he will do for all. And what he did for Elijah, he'll do for us. He'll meet you. And hey, how I many like the big cat head business? <laughs> he'll bring you one of them on the phone. Some nice cold ice water in your desert place. And he'll show up when. And he'll show up how he wants to because guess what? He's God. And he can. What we got to do, church, look somebody in your car and say, don't worry. Don't worry. God's got this. God's got say it again. Don't, don't worry. God's, God's got, got this. this. I want to hear you. Don't, don't worry. God's, God's got, got, got this. this. Say it again. Don't worry. Don't worry. God's, God's got, got this. this. Time. Don't worry. God's, God's got, got this. this. You believe it? Amen. Amen. Let's act like it, church. That's Dear right. Heavenly Father, right. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had, God, to come together and worship your son, Jesus, to worship your holy name. Lord, we're thankful for a reminder in Scripture that you got us in the palm of your hand. You tell us that the earth and the fullness thereof is yours. God, I'm thankful that I'm in your right hand. I'm thankful today for what you're doing. And I'm thankful today that even in the midst of problem and uncertainty and worry that you're still showing up for people. Yes, amen. That you're still doing mighty and miraculous works. I'm thankful today that my weary place, that my wilderness, that my dry place, my thirsty place may be the very thing that somebody needs to be saved. It may be the very thing that they need to find you.
every situation. Say it again. Don't worry, God's got this. Don't, Don't worry, worry. God's, God's got, got this. this. He's got me. He's got you. He'll take care of you. We love you. We thank you for coming. Remember next week, weather permitting, we're going to do this thing at 1230. It's Easter. Somebody give God a little bit of praise this morning for what he's done. Amen. As you leave, some of you had asked how you can give to the church. If you'll see Dennis and you'll see Curtis, they got some buckets. If you want to give to the church, it'll be a great blessing for the church. Amen. And it'll go for the upbuilding of the kingdom. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we leave this place today, God, Lord, I pray. Lord, that you will not let worry set in on your people. But God, Lord, that you will let your people declare to worry how big you are.